Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to Team APS, Paul here. So, Konami has recently done a really good job, I think, of introducing some new ways to play Yu-Gi-Oh! For example, we got YCS Atlanta a couple of months back. There was a 3v3 tournament as the main event, which I thought was incredible. It was a lot of fun, a lot of people seemed to really enjoy it, and it's something that I hope to see them do more of. We also got speed duels this year, which in my opinion are a really fun, simpler way to get into Yu-Gi-Oh! and start playing. It's more reminiscent of the old days, and I think that's good for like younger or just newer players. So it has me thinking that now is probably the best possible time for Yu-Gi-Oh! to bring back a few older formats that it used to have and maybe introduce some changes and stuff to those along the way. So in this video, I wanted to go over the three that I had in mind. And of course, at the end of the video, I'd like to know what other types of formats would you like to see from Yu-Gi-Oh! supported by Konami? And you know, how, why, what rules, what nuances? Let me know all of that down in the comments at the end of the video. All right, so the first one is sealed play. Now, this is something that Yu-Gi-Oh! has explored in the past quite a lot, actually. Sealed play works in several different ways. There's like purely sealed play where, you know, you maybe get like just a starter deck and like you have to use that. There's also draft play where you get a certain number of packs and you pick out cards from that pack and like make your own deck and you like pass them along the table. There's different ways to distribute the cards. Either way though, there are a lot of really, really fun benefits to playing this way. So the first is that it's accessible. It's not a money lock. A lot of people complain about, you know, it's expensive to play Yu-Gi-Oh! right now. If you want to play competitively and you have to buy Boral Swords and Phantasmes and all of these expensive cards, then it doesn't feel like the playing ground is like even because, you know, if you can't afford the cards, then you just can't play the decks to their full potential. But by playing in a sealed format, everybody, it's usually very cheap, you know, 10 or $20, and everybody has access to pretty much the same card pool. So it feels like the focus is less on, you know, just who has the most money and more on who is better at deck building, who can, you know, take a set of cards and make a strategy on the fly and, you know, put it together. And it feels like you get to put a little bit more of yourself and some originality into things. And it does test skill and deck building. And that's really, really cool to me because, you know, everybody can copy a net deck build online. But what happens when you just kind of have to put your deck together on the fly? Now, there are a few ways to play it. Like I said, there's like draft and there's pure sealed play. I think that the best way is with battle packs, and that's something I'd love to see Konami bring back. So the battle packs, in case you guys don't know, were the series of packs that were pretty much built for draft. They had a lot of reprints and also a lot of new cards. And to me, the best ones were battle packs two and three. So battle pack two, for instance, had a theme of being like War of the Giants, which meant it was kind of boss monster or high level monster centric. So many of the strategies involved summoning, you know, different level seven or higher monsters that had really strong effects. Nothing broken. It wasn't like you were summoning, you know, Boral Sword Dragons every turn. But, you know, it was about decks that could generate tribute fodder and tribute summon, you know, whatever strong monsters you wanted. The best thing about these packs were that they were like 250, 300 cards large. Like these were very large sets. So if you did draft with your opponent, it was like impossible to see every card in the set. And impossible to have the same build that your opponent had. In my opinion, that is genius because it means that even if a meta kind of develops around the pack, like, okay, these are the best cards to run out of this, there's still no guarantee that you'll necessarily see them, and so you will oftentimes have to make do. Battle Pack 3 was the next pack, and it did a really great job as well. It even introduced a new rule that made all monsters be considered all types for the purposes of, you know, support cards and spells and traps, so that is kind of a fun new dynamic. And of course, structure deck duels are a lot of fun. I actually have said in the past, I think that structure deck duels would be really cool if you got like three copies of a new structure deck and then you got to make, you know, a $30 variant of the deck because it's always really popular with people. The recent Spellcaster structure and Soul Burner, Zombie Horror, they're all really good. And if you could have multiple copies of it, but only just those cards to make a deck, that'd be great. And I think it would work perfectly because structure decks have been so strong lately, people would really enjoy it. Second is tag duels. So tag duels are 2v2 duels, and unlike the 3v3 tournament format that we had at that YCS, tag duels are actually a lot more involved. You don't entirely share fields with your partner, but you can use their monsters as synchro material or Xyz material, and you can also treat their graveyard as your own if you're using cards like Monster Reborn, for instance. There were a lot of really fun combos that you could do in tag duel formats for that reason. So if I was playing a zombie deck and my partner's playing a zombie deck, 
I can remove from play my Mizuki from my graveyard to special summon a zombie from his graveyard, which is really cool to me. And tag dueling, I think, does a really great job as well of kind of helping with the, the mood and the camaraderie. Something that I liked about the 3v3 duel that I also really liked about tag duels is that since you have a partner, I feel like there's not as much venom, there's not as much like salt, people don't get so angry at their opponent. I notice a lot more like talking and laughter and they're strategizing. You know, you have somebody to double check your plays with and like talk like, is this the best play to make? Is this something I should do? You know, it, it doesn't just feel like you're kind of alone and it's just a matchup and you get sacked and you lose and you're angry. Tag dueling is a lot more fun than that. That said though, uh, Tag Duel's rules have not been updated in a very long time. Konami used to have an official, you know, sort of rule document for how Tag Duel's worked, but it hasn't been updated since, you know, the, the Zexel Xyz era, so we never really found out how pendulums would work exactly for Tag Duel's. Like, can you use your partner's pendulum scales? Or, you know, of course, Link Monsters in the Extra Monster Zone, that obviously complicates things even more, you know, how would that be situated in, uh, like, tag dual field i don't know i would love to see konami update them in their most recent tournament policy documents they do mention tag duels as like a type of alternative dual format so maybe there's some hope that we'll see this thing return and last but not least something that i would love to see it's kind of a bit of a gimmick kind of a bit of a meme i think these days is traditional format so traditional format for those who don't know because it actually is really pretty old is the format in Yu-Gi-Oh where all of the banned cards that are like, you know, like you can't use, they're on the ban list, are limited to one. This is kind of crazy. Uh, it means that you'll get to use, say, Pot of Greed, you get to use all those banned cards, Spellbook of Judgment or whatever, the Dragon Rulers, the things that you want to see come back. They're all at one, which is pretty insane. Uh, it was a format that people did play before. I I can see where it would be obnoxiously broken. There are, of course, a lot of different ways that they could do this, but I, you know, I have some fears with how, like, you know, high-octane Yu-Gi-Oh! is these days and how many cards kind of get exploited and abused, but that said, a lot of people want to be able to use their banned cards, and I don't see why you shouldn't let them, at least, you know, in its in their own format. Like, yeah, it would be broken, there'd be lots of crazy things and obnoxious decks, but if people want to play that way, let them play that way. Um, you know, there are people who have entire banned binders, like just binders of all the old banned cards that just have almost no chance of ever coming back. Give them some purpose, give them some use, give them some real tangible value in-game. I think that'd be cool. I think that, you know, maybe a rule I would impose is like you only get to pick one banned card and use in your deck. And I think that could already, in and of itself, change a lot of game dynamics. But, you know, why not just give it the whole thing? It could be fun either way. Um, and with all three of these formats that I've thought about here, I would really like to see Konami, like, support them. So I don't just mean, like, they exist. I mean, you know, give local prize support. Things that people can win only by playing in 2v2 tag duels. Like, you know, have a 2v2 style play mat for instance, that you can offer as like a prize for OTS tournaments, like OTS stores that do this type of thing, or like special sealed product prizes that you can only get when you, you know, do sealed format events. I think that'd be cool. I mean, you could start also doing them as public events, like side events at YCSs and nationals, but I really want to see it seen as like an equal footing to the normal game. It would give a lot more people just different ways to play because a big strength that games like Magic the Gathering have over Yu-Gi-Oh, in my opinion, is that freedom to play in different ways and just find a format that you enjoy so you're not forced kind of into one particular metagame. All right, that's it for the video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Let me know what you think. What types of old formats or different alternative formats would you like to see Konami support? How would you like to see them support it? All of that. All right, that's it for the video. Give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, of course, for more discussions like this and skits and other crazy fun stuff. Join the Team APS Discord. It's a pretty fun place. We recently got a partnership on our server, so that's really cool. Check out Inked Gaming, one of the channel sponsors. If you want to get a custom playmat or a custom anything, really, uh, use the code APS10 for 10% off uh, on anything on the site. All right, that's going to be it. I will see you guys in the next video. Pass turn.